I signed with uh, Public Television. I signed with Multicom, who has two of my films playing now on pay-per-view, Time Warner Cable, Comcast, The Night Never Sleeps, and Send No Flowers. All those films, what they have in common, they all premiered at the Long Island International <laughs> Film Expo. <laughs> Disco, um, being in the Long Island International Film Expo, uh, was mentioned in Newsday and Newsday.com, which means it reached a million people and people heard about the movie. Um, as an independent filmmaker, I'd like to tell all of you that I'm independent because I want my independence. It's because Hollywood's not giving me $50 million to make a movie. But um, I'm very grateful. This is a really great film festival. Long Island, which is part of the New York metropolitan area, and only the New York metropolitan area can state this fact. You're exposed to every nationality, cultural background, and religious belief. This is a good, with all the craziness that goes on in the world, this is a very, very positive thing that Deborah Markowitz and the festival is doing. Thank you very much. Hello, and welcome to Stage Screen and In Between. I'm Helen. And don't I have an exciting show for you tonight. I'm at the premiere of Fred Carpenter's latest film, Disco, at the Long Island International Film Expo. Fred, your films just keep getting better and better, and I was so excited to see a film that had to do with the disco era. It was wonderful. What, what made you write that? Because you're the writer and the director as well. Well, I wanted to do a, a film that was interesting. Uh, I wanted to do a film where I could compete with the Hollywood $125 million films. <laughs> Let's see, I'm making a movie for 50 grand, and I want to compete with a $100 million Hollywood movie. Okay. So I wanted to, do, I wanted to work with some type of subject matter. I think disco is phenomenal. And it was a great story with Edward C. Wall and Joanne Tamburo, and it premiered here at the Long Island International Film Expo. But we're not done. The film will probably be done in September. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I played it to get feedback. And Newsday had some really nice things to say about it. Uh, Ray Fogg Guzman. And you, you know, you, right there, you got a million people hearing about your film. So yeah. it's great. It's a really great festival. A lot of fun. Really nice time. Now let me ask you, how long did it take you to write it? Well, you know, I wrote it over the years. And yeah, yeah. And then, uh, but as far as the last installment, a couple of days with Joanne and Eddie. Yeah. Because it starts off, I don't want to give it away, a little somber, you know, and uh, and then all of a sudden that music kicks in and you're like, oh boy, that's bringing me back. Now you work with a team kind of regularly. You have uh, Marianne Giannino and Lynn like Daly. My, my, my right hand person, Marianne. Yeah. She's more than a casting director, she's a producer. Now, yeah. You shot this at uh, Zachary's. How long were you there? Seven days. Yeah, and they weren't long days, but seven days. And Zachary's actually was a hot spot back in the day when yeah, it was the yeah. disco era, so that was really true. Well, you know what? It still is a hot spot. Now they got 40 and over. Unfortunately, I'm <laughs> way over 40 and over. So. But you still qualify. Yeah, yeah. That's true. It was, it was a good, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Now, um, wh what do you intend to do with this? Are you going to get distribution for it, or is it going online? Well, the, the, your other films did get some kind of distribution. Yeah, every, every one of my movies has gotten distribution. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I have two films, The Night Never Sleeps, right. Send No Flowers, playing on Time Warner Cable, uh, uh, Cox, and Comcast. Uh, I'm in negotiations with a movie called Charlie Mantle. And this one, um, this one is kind of special as far as from a business standpoint. So... You know, once the movie's done, and uh, probably, probably like I bet you February, we'll be into a deal. How was it directing the dancers? You had some fabulous dancing in there. The the uh, you had a team there, uh, a, well, was, a man and a woman. Yeah, that was Christine Christine Montante, and Dylan, our dance partner. They're phenomenal. But the dancing in this movie isn't supposed to be great dancing. These are people at the end of the '70s. They're kind of delusional. They think they're John Travolta, but they're really not. It's more like comical. They're legends in their own mind. That's exactly, and the the, the uh, movie starts out with that uh, actually up on the screen, and that was a, a quote from the the Steve Rebell Steve Steve Rebell, 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 Studio ran a Studio 54, yeah. right? He goes, uh, everyone thought that they could dance like John Travolta. That was the power of Hollywood, but unfortunately, when these ordinary people get into the disco and onto the dance floor, they become dance legends in their own mind. Something to that effect. Okay. Do you have anything inspirational you could say to a filmmaker that uh, doesn't have a lot of money? Because you really make pretty great films for on, on a low budget. This was a pretty low budget. 
Well, what advice would you give them? Quit before it's too late. No, it's a tough field. It's 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 a listen. This is a tough game. Most people will never make an indie film, and the ones that do make an indie film, you get you get bounced out of the box. It's brutal. I, I mean, I can't. You know, think about it. The average Hollywood movie this summer, 2015, is 127 million dollars. So I'm making a movie for 50 grand. I got to be out of my mind. But script, script, script in the present with great performances. You need good actors. You really do. What would you tell your teenage self? Hi, uh, teenage self, meaning like if you could go back in time, and 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 from the lessons you've learned now, what would you tell yourself? Well, I I did a moronic thing. I was working for Paramount Pictures, and I left Paramount to make my own movies. What a fool I was! I could have been making these fifty thousand dollar movies on weekends, going to my friends at Paramount. Oh, that was terrible. If I go back in time, I would never... You know, that, 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 that's your legacy, you know? <laughs> that's your legacy. That, that's you. And, and you never know which one is going to really hit. It is kind of a gambler's game. Yeah, well, all my, if you make a quality film for the amount of money, you're always going to make money because yeah. you're making them for no money. Yeah. But you're trying to get that Bob or Harvey Weinstein or yeah. to see your film, well, believe in your film. And, and you had some good actors in here. I mean, you had Robert Clohesse and Robert Fernero. Papadia, Paul Vario, Anthony Garino. I mean, just really, really Katerina. Right. Awesome. Awesome stuff. Really. Yeah. Matter of fact, you're a phenomenal actress, too, by the way. Oh, thank you very much. Well, he you. remembers me as Madame Vera. He loves oh, me as Madame Vera. Really, really good. <laughs> All right, but listen, I have to go over there right I now. I know you do. Thank you so much, Fred. Right, let me, he let me know. pull him away from his party. Yeah, which is my mom. I got to take her home. Oh, no, yeah. it's kidding around. She's having a lot of fun. Uh, Matter of fact, if you have a mom that's a senior citizen, you can you can bring her to activities like this where they can interact. It's really good for them. It's good for their health. I you know? know. She's so proud of you. Your mom is just so proud of you. Stresses me out, but I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. I really have me on the show. You're very welcome. Thank you. You good? I'm here with Katerina Palumbo, and she had the role of Kim, which I have to say, she was phenomenal. You were wonderful, Katerina. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's very nice of you. Yeah. She was really out there and aggressive and disco-y and club-like and very 70s. How did you pull that character together? Oof. I don't know. I, I researched a little bit about the, about the era and... Uh, Paul Vario, who's also in the movie, he's you know he taught me so much about method acting and like really getting into my character and being believable, and I just did the best that I could. Yeah, you know what? It was a good thing that you're good friends with Paul because he's a fabulous actor, and isn't that great that that he can give you little pointers? And and did you work? Did he work with you on the script? Uh, yeah, we rehearsed together. We practiced. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It was great. Yeah, he was good. Yeah, he that's nice. good because he plays the role of the of the coach. Yeah, and I wanted to talk to him about that if he has a minute. I don't want to go into that. But um, now tell me a little bit more about your character because we don't want to give anything away. But um, uh, well, uh, tell me more. Okay, so my character was Kim. You were in a dance scene too. Tell me about that. Well, um, I was the love interest of both uh, Frankie and Sammy in the movie. And, well, I actually, I was interested in them. I was interested in Frankie, and Sammy was always at my was always on my back. He was always interested in me, and then we did this really sexy uh, dance scene, uh, Sammy and I, and uh, that was pretty fun. We had a good time doing that, um, and uh, you know he you know he's a character in himself, and he just brought it out in me. <laughs> now, when you were growing up, who were your idols? Oh God, Lauren Bacall. She was my favorite, and my dad always told me I look like Judy Garland. Everybody in my family calls me Judy, Judy, Judy. <laughs> always, that's like my nickname in my family. Now, let me ask you: Do you sing as well? Yes, I sing and I dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good for you. Well, I hope to see you in more things. Thank you so much, Katerina. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. Thank you. I have with me now Paul Vario, who had the role of the coach. And I have to tell you, I was very taken with the scene that you had in the, in, in the men's room when you were having a conversation with Frankie, I believe, a very, uh, an important heart-to-heart. -heart. And you really were living that moment. I really could see that. 
That was the scene where he was asking me about the money I owe? Was that no, no, that wasn't it. When, when, when he was saying that something happened with a girl and oh, he didn't know. Oh, was that a hallway? Okay. Oh, was that a hallway? I thought that yeah, was a men's room. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, I'm the coach and, you know, these kids come to me with all their problems and I give them advice because I love the kids, you know. And but, you know, you could really see that in your eyes. It were really, yeah, yeah. You, were, you were really living that moment and I said, gee, he's really good. Yeah, but you got to realize something. He did all the talking first, and he was like, he fed me. But you know what? It's very important to be a good listener, and you were listening, and Fred got a lot of your reaction shots. Yeah. and, and, and working off, him, off yeah. his emotions. Absolutely. And that's what I worked off. And then when it was my turn to jump in, I was already where I had to be. I didn't even have to really work at it because I was just listening to him talk to listening. me. And, and rule number one, they say, if you want to be a good actor, be a good listener. A lot of times and people are so worried about their lines, if they listen, it's there. Yeah, and also it was all scripted, so I didn't, there was no ad lib in there at all. So I really had to, I, I took whatever he had to say in, you know, you imagine like maybe that's your own kid talking to you in your brain, you know, even though, you know. What, what was your favorite part about the movie? Did you have a favorite part of something funny that happened while you were filming? Something happened funny that I... Something you liked about your character or... What'd you like? Oh, I, I, I thought it was a pretty serious character. You know, I always have fun when I'm behind the camera anyway. So even if I don't look like I am, I am. You know what I mean? <laughs> so... But, um... Now, did you live in the disco days? You look kind of young. Uh, I'm no young. I'm, I'm 53. I've been around. Oh! So you did go to disco? Around, you know... <laughs> You did go to disco, huh? Yeah, I was been in, I was back in them days. I was a kid in the, you know in the seventies, eighties was my era though. Yeah. You know, late more, more. like seventies like I was in high school, and you know eighties was my era like after school and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, now, what do you got coming up, Paul? Anything else? Yeah, not yet. Soon, I hope. You know, we're, I'm hearing a lot of things that there's a lot of things happening, so. Hopefully. You know what? A lot of times people have good scripts and great ideas. They need the money to back them. But somebody like Fred Carpenter, he can get it all together for a little bit of money. So you know what? You don't have to always have big bucks, but you got to have a good team, a good script. As as uh, Fred actors, said, great actors, actors, and you are a very good actor. My hat off to you. Paul Vario. Thank you. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. It's cozy. I have I with me now the very lovely and wonderful Tony Cost, who played the bouncer, Angelo the bouncer, and Robert Finero's right hand man in the movie Disco. That's How'd cool. you like your character? It was good, you know, for the, the scenes I had. It was, you know, it's pretty much cut and dry. What do bouncers do? They're, they're, they're robots. Yeah. They, they, uh, they work for the. For the, for the man and that's it. The main thing that a bouncer has to do is to look intimidating. And I have to say, when you're standing there, you're looking intimidating. You're a big guy. I am. And it, you know what? When you put Billy Doyen next to me, it's, it's like he's, he's big and bigger. He's giant, that guy. He's a football player. It's like 6'10". Oh, yeah? The other guy. You didn't see yeah, the other yeah, bouncer? Yeah, big yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know, I know, big I Billy. Yeah. So, um, tell me, have you worked with Fred before? Oh, yeah. A couple of different movies. Yeah, Freddie's been good to me, yeah. Send No Flowers, uh, Charlie Mantle, and this is the third one I did with him, yeah. Yeah, and they have distribution, right? So uh, it looks cool. like this might be heading that, that way as well, right? I, I expect it will, yeah. 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 So what you got coming up now? What do I got coming up? I, I got a, a, a hip replacement surgery coming up, so I'm, uh, I'm sort of on the shelf, yeah. Uh, but, is that why uh, you have the cane? So you're yes, walking yes, with the yes, cane. Yes. Oh, when are you going to do that? Um... Uh, Probably sometime in the fall. I should be good to go by next year, maybe. I know most people that put it off say, you know what, I should have done it two months ago. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, best of luck to you with everything, with your health, and most of all with the movies. Thank you did you a so great much. job. Thank you, sweetie. Good to see you. Good to see you. I have with me now the very beautiful Cindy Lunati, who played Gina, the blonde bombshell. You certainly are a blonde bombshell, and what I consider a blonde, a, a blonde bombshell is 
a beautiful face, which you have, and a stunning body. And let me tell you something. As soon as the camera heads your way, every eye goes to you. Do you know that? Thank you. No, I'm a little, uh, a little timid, yeah. <laughs> but I got to get used to it. Yeah. <laughs> Were you nervous when it was time to, to uh, shoot your scene? No, I just went into the character and I just played my role. I don't get I, my nerves just go away yeah. when I have to get into the scene. Yeah. <laughs> but it's really great. <laughs> well, you look stunning, and and uh, I, I can't give the movie away. That's the problem with this. But but you know, you, you you were funny and you were to the point. And I have to say that everything you said really just rang true. You said it in a very natural way with all like the right inflections uh, but yet assertive you know I think you really did a good job you nailed it my real Brooklyn came out of me at that point and I brought the real scene to life <laughs> but it was great it was a great feeling now you've been very busy lately just quickly you want to name a couple of the other things you've been working on yeah, I did the Bistro TV pilot with Mark, Michael Abbo, and I'm doing all the, another few uh, things with executive producing a few films and um, working my way up, way up there. I know. And you have a little boy, don't you, too? Isn't he acting now yeah, as well? Yeah. And what's his name? His name is Jonathan Lenati, and he's done a Law and Order. And he's in the, he just is almost joining the union, very close. And they love him on there. Aww. Well, the best of luck to you Thank and you to so your much. son. Thank you so much for this interview. I appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. Anytime. Thank you. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Okay. Good. A little PR. <laughs> Hi, I have with me now one of the co-writers with Fred, Joanne Tambora, and the the other writer is Ed Wall. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. So, so don't tell me that they bullied you because it was two guys and one girl. How'd you work that out? Uh, Fred came to me and said, "We need help." Basically, oh. is what happened. So we gave you the script. It was very convoluted. Okay. And it was definitely from a male point of view. You know, the disco is how they were back then. Yeah. So I said, no. You got to make this work because there was, you have to give another side of it, which I brought the love story into it. Okay. And um, also made the story more comprehensive where it all tied in. Okay. The characters. So, okay. so now, what else have you worked on? Because they went to you, so you must be established at this. So, what else have you Jesse. done? I wrote Jesse. Oh, yes. Yeah, I saw that. Yes. Yeah, I wrote Jesse, and I helped. Uh, I know Fred a long time, uh -huh. about twenty years. Okay. So I, I'm also a published writer. Uh, interviewed a lot of rock stars. So, how long did this take to write, from soup to nuts? Uh, it took about six or seven months. Yeah. Yeah, it does. You know. Well, congratulations. It was terrific. Thank you so much. And I have a few songs. I have four songs that I co-wrote, two. The Final Dance with G uh, Jim Yeager. Uh, there's another song that's featured, and two other songs are going in. And my allergies are killing me. <laughs> you can't let them bother you tonight. Well, thank you, because the music was great. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. You're welcome.